In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and create a table within the database that we created in the previous lesson called Snippets. I'm going to go ahead and just copy all of the code that I had from the previous lesson. So I'll just go ahead and copy that. And we're going to go ahead and create a new page here. So let's go ahead and go File, New. I'm going to paste it in there. And let's go ahead and save it as. So save as. And I'll just call this one Create Table. Dot PHP. All right, I, I could create the database and the table all within the same page. In fact, I could just add the code that I wanted to here to make the table created right after the database was created. However, in this particular lesson, I'm, I've already got it created, so I'm not going to go ahead and just recreate it again because I'll get this error that comes back and says it was already created. So you could, if this was all in one page, you could all leave it there. However, I'm going to remove the whole creating of the database called snippets. I'll just go ahead and delete it. There we go. So now all I have is my connection to the database system itself and then the closing of our database connection. What I'm going to do now is I need to connect to MySQL's database called snippets. So what we're going to use is a function and this is where I want the table to be created. And that's because if you remember from um, previous lessons when we looked at MySQL using phpMyAdmin, you saw there were multiple databases within the MySQL database system. So what I want to do is I need to tell it which specific database I want to work with. And we do that using a function called um, MySQL select DB. And it's going to be like this. MySQL underscore select underscore DB. And this is a function that we have to work with. And this will now select the database that I want to work with and then I also will need to tell it which um, connection that I want to actually use to my database system. So here's how it, the basic syntax or the basic parameters that are going to go here within my function. First one is I'm going to go ahead and type in snippets within the double quotes. That was the name of the database that I had created in the previous lesson. I'm going to put a comma in there and then I also need to put in there a dollar sign CON. And that's the connection that I want to use to connect to my database system. So this will select the snippets database using the connection that I have up on line 6. So now that I've got this connection made, we're going to actually start writing a query or passing an SQL statement to the database now to add a table to this particular database. And so the SQL statement is going to be kind of a tricky one because within the create table statement there's going to actually be parentheses and so we're going to have a lot of parentheses going around so what I'll do on this one is I'll use the whole SQL statement and store it in a variable that way we can just reuse the variable and so that's one of one, one of the wonderful things with variables is the fact that it can hold a lot of different information so I'll just create a variable called SQL right now and I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to the whole statement that I want to work with SQL set it equal to and so here's the t MySQL or the SQL statement that's going to allow us to create a table. It's going to be the word create and then it's going to be table. So we'll put in table and I'll just leave them all uppercase capital letters. And now the name of the table that I want to work with which I'm going to go ahead and call it uh, lectures. Okay now that I've got that in there which is very similar to how we created a database um, using the create and then we use database for the database but table for tables and then now the name, what I want to do is I need to create all of the fields that are part of my table itself. And so this is where it gets a little bit tricky when it comes to it. What I'll need to have here is an opening after the lectures. I'm going to go ahead and hit a space and have an opening parenthesis. Now I'm going to space down a few and put a closing parenthesis. And between these parentheses, what I need to do is put in every one of the fields that are in my table itself. So the first field that I want to work with, let's just go ahead and call it a topic. That's the name of the field. Like uh, You could also have something like first name, last name, and all those other field types that are out there for a database. But I'll use topic, and I'm going to go ahead and put a space. I need to tell it what data type it is using the SQL statements. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it if it's typical strings, then in databases you can use a varchar, and that's the data type for the characters of the strings. And then this one also requires two parentheses after it. Now in those parentheses, what I can do is also tell it how long the data, how many characters it can actually hold. And so let's just go ahead and put in there 20. Let's just say the topic can be 20 characters long. 
All right, so pick a number that's going to be um, something that's large enough to hold whatever the field is supposed to be holding. And then what we'll do is put a comma after it. And I'm going to go ahead and space down to the next line now. That's my first field. The next field that I want to work with, let's just go ahead and put name. And I'll go ahead and call that one varchar. That's, a, that's the data type. And let's just go ahead and put 20 in there for that one as well. Put a comma at the end of that one. And then I'm going to do one more field type and I'm going to call this one attendance. And we'll just be something like how many people were in attendance for this particular lecture. And so after attendance, if you want to work with numbers, there are a couple different types. The int is for the integers that are going to be whole numbers that we want to work with. And so I'll go ahead and leave that there. It's the last one that I've got created, so I do not need to end this with a in fact, you don't want to end this with a comma. You want to leave it the way that it is. I'm going to go ahead and delete and bring up that parenthesis. At the end of the statement, we're going to go ahead and put in a semicolon. Actually, put in a double quote and then a semicolon. And so this is what the SQL variable is going to be. It's going to hold all of this information. So it starts off here with a double quote, goes all the way through, adds all those fields in there, ends with a double quote, and then to end this particular line, we're going to go ahead and put, um, or statement within PHP, we're going to go ahead and put the semicolon. So there's a lot of information there, and the more fields we have, if we kept adding more fields, we can, can just continue it, make sure that they have a comma at the end of every one of our fields, and you could always research the data types for um, MySQL that you can actually use and how to actually make different data types that are out there but I've got the var chars and the integers so we've got strings and we've got a number to work with here for our data types so this is going to go ahead and create or be the whole entire statement so now it's time to actually use the statement itself we're going to go ahead and type in MySQL underscore query just like we did for um, creating the database itself We'll go ahead and put in the parentheses, and that with a semicolon. Now the two parameters that I need is the first one is going to be the actual SQL statement. Since I have it all saved within a variable, I'll just go ahead and put dollar sign $SQL. I'll go ahead and put a comma, and now I need the connection. The connection is going to be the dollar sign CON. And so this will go ahead and execute all of that code that I have typed in there for the SQL statement. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. I'll go ahead and save it and I'm going to go back here to my list of all the pages that I have. I'll refresh it and I can now see create table. Let's go ahead and click on create table. It doesn't show anything and that's because I did not put this in an if statement that said, you know, to tell me that the table was created if it was successful or to like the else to echo out an error or to display an error. I did not do that on this one here so all I have is a blank screen but I can go ahead and check it if I look at my phpMyAdmin. So let's go ahead and look. Um, I'll do localhost phpMyAdmin. Open this up. Click on the snippets database that I have created. And you can see there's a table in here called lectures. I'm going to go ahead and click on the lectures table. And you can see that I've got a topic, a name, and attendance as all fields within my database. So we have successfully created the table as well as the fields to work with. So now in the next video we're going to take a look at how to insert data into these fields so that we can start storing our data in our database.